This guy. This fucking idiot. Look at this fucking idiot. So fucking happy. No fucking clue what he's about to do to himself. So fucking happy. Look at this guy. In like two days, he's going to take it all down and it's going to be fucking bullshit. He's going to have no studio forever. He's going to be just a miserable piece of shit. So let's just really quickly hit pause and now take a look at the fucking studio that once was... And maybe, hopefully, if it ever gets fucking set up again, will be again. All right. Bottom picture. Right fucking side. Look at the fucking whited out area. Miserable piece of shit. All right. So the way I organize my studio is to the right. It all makes a lot more sense. It's more sensible. It's fucking presets. It's monosynths. It's, um, it's things that are much more logically oriented. And then in the center, I have control. I have my mixer, my MX-1. I have my Akai, which is where I, my Akai Forest, which I use for sequencing. And then drum machines in the center. And then as you progress further to the left, you have Matriarch. You have Subharmonicon. You have DFAM. You have a custom distortion box, a Proco Rat, Mini Brute 2S, my modular case, and Lyra 8. So it's chaos. So it's supposed to be like hemispheres of the brain where you have order on one side. On the other side, you have experimentation and chaos. That's the idea with the studio. All right, so now we're going to take a look at the other view. Here's a panoramic shot of the old studio. This is all taken down, but all this stuff is going up in the new studio, so it's still kind of instructive so you can see where my head's at. This is what I see when I jam. As you can see behind me, on the left and right, you can see blue screen, and so I have Abstract AMCR. He's an artist out of uh, Austin. He does visuals, and I broadcast the visuals in for my streams, put them up on the blue screen, and that's what you see. We use a program called Audio Movers, which is a low latency tunnel across the internet, so he can see and hear in my music in near real time, and then do his jam on the video stuff, which is all similar to the improvisation that I do, improvised with macros and things like that. So what you're seeing is the rig. It has a left side, it has the right side. You also see some extra input devices, the mic, some of the artwork that's up in the room. If you look over to the other side of the room, you can see a blue screen up. That blue, or I'm sorry, a green screen. That green screen is used for an Ableton rig, and that is also a broadcast computer right there. So there's four cameras that are active. There's lights. The four cameras, one is on the ceiling, one hangs over the modular gear, one is direct on. If you look in the center of the shot, it's in the middle of Jerry Garcia's face, kind of. And then uh, the other one is, uh, it's on a boom over the Ableton rig. And so that's, what that does is it allows me to do rotations when I'm doing OBS broadcasts because really my focus is on streaming. I like to jam and I like to perform. I like to jam and improvise and have people watch. So doing it in a stream is really uh, my focus. So, and I do that also on Ableton as well. So that's why I have the Ableton rig. In the new studio, I'm planning on having four workstations. There's the big rig, which uh, there's a lot of changes that are coming to that. I'm very excited about those. There's the Ableton rig. There's going to be an open table, which will be reconfigurable with a 90 degree camera. And then underneath all of this, it's tough to tell looking at this view, but I built up the entire synth rig on top of my vinyl set. All right, that is it for the old studio. Now it's on to the new studio. Now when I filmed all that, it was before we built up the new studio. It was before the build out and I thought that it was larger than it actually was. So consequently, when I actually built everything up, I realized they didn't have room for the turntables. So fortunately, they're not gonna be in this build out, they're in another room. Anyway, without further ado. Hey Clownfest, it's done, the studio rebuild is complete and I'm super excited to show everyone. First off, hey Samuel, what's your favorite word? Fuck is the only fucking word that can be put in every fucking way and still make fucking sense. Hey Samuel, turn the lights on in the music room. Yeah, here we go. Alright, here we go. Let's check out the studio. Now what I want to do is I want to introduce it in terms of concepts. I could go over like the gear, but uh, everyone knows what all this gear is, right? Everyone knows... That's a base station too. Everyone knows it's a matrix. Everyone knows what they do. But how I've combined them is what makes me me. It's what makes me 
unique as the artist that I seek to be. And so this station is really designed for to accentuate the creative strengths that I have. This rig is all dollars. So there is a force and that's the central portion of it. But I do a lot of sequencing on devices where the sequences are really cool. Like the 303 has slides, right? So a lot of other devices have tricks like that too. The 2S, the subharmonicon, DFAM, etc. And I try to use onboard sequencers as much as possible when they do something really cool. Second, it's all improvisation for me. I'll explain my methodology right now then. I'll write a beat on the TR-8S and I'll save it. Or I'll write a riff on my iPad and I'll save it. Or I'll work with my dog, you can probably hear my dogs, uh, Ableton over there and I'll do, I do jams on that too. But if I write a riff, something really cool, I'll save it and I'll throw all those loops onto the Akai Force. So now that I have something really unique in the Akai Force and I have some patterns built up maybe that I've saved on the baseline, although I'm perfectly happy ripping new patterns, uh, new patterns in the LXR, the TR-8S, is I have a bunch of things that I can call on and work with and kind of chew up and, and build up. It almost doesn't matter what's underneath it because the way I'm going to play it is what makes it unique. I mix on an MX-1. I'm an old DJ. I used to play the Rust Belt raves around the Midwest. And so to me, I need something with cue mixing. I need something with effects where the mix is the performance. And so it is the central piece of what I do. More than anything else, it comes together in the mix. I specialize in transitions. I will improvise on the OB6, the Arp Odyssey. I'll improvise lines on the Matriarch. I will throw together noise and ambient sections on Matriarch and Lyra and try to really develop atmosphere and groove. I focus heavily on drums. But the core piece of my methodology is it's no different than when I was DJing. I'm looking for that groove that really just hits and, and works and I'm, I want to ride it and develop it. And then I look for the next one and I try to ride and develop and I try to keep moving fast to make sure that I'm always finding the next piece, the next thing to move into. And I keep themes around that I can bring back in and out throughout a set. So I'll build up a set where I have maybe a riff on the DFAM and I'll keep bringing it in and out for about two hours as I continue to develop lines on other pieces of equipment. That way there's a consistent throughput. There's a line that goes from the start to the finish. I have two stands in my rig and they're very deliberately organized. This stand makes sense. This is orderly. This has equipment that is vintage tones. So you have the OB6, it's Oberheim. You have the ARP, ARP, you're thinking Rocketman, classic rock. You have presets, you have uh, things saved. You have the TR-8S, which is an awesome fucking machine, but guess what? It's also pretty standard. It has the you know, roll-in sounds, it has samples. It's not like a very experimental machine. The other stand is all about experimentation and chaos. I think of it as like the hemispheres of my brain. So right brain, left brain, right? Creativity order. So here it's a lot less standardized. You have a lot of semi-modular and I have a modular case that's growing. Uh, and I patch between all these units to try to find new sounds. I'm all about experimenting over here. I'm all about trying to find new ways of doing things, new grooves, new sounds, trying to find, you know, those sublime little moments and noise, ambience, texture, atmosphere. This is to be complex. This is supposed to be innovative. This is supposed to be the, the part of technology that's you know, that really lights up the brain. I do want to talk about just some of the cool tricks that I do here. So probably the coolest is this. So Mini Bird 2S, the filter on this thing sucks. The rest of the device is kind of brilliant. The sequencer is awesome. It has four lanes and you can patch them out and have them do different functions. The sequencer, I keep totally open. I patch out from here into an Erica VCF3 and then right back into here. What this allows me to do is still get the sub which is a sine wave, which makes the thump, as well as be able to take the rest of the tones and shape them with a filter that's really awesome. And the VCF3 is a fantastic optical filter. Um, the rest of the modules that I have at this time are front ends for channels on the MX-1. Everything here mixes through the MX-1. The other piece on here that's all about chaos is really the Lear 8, and if you're familiar with it, you know that it's, it is all about chaos. The methodology over here is to get interplay between devices, uh, to be able to play with distortion and harmonics, to be able to find textures and to be able to uh, explore. So I take the framework of something a little bit more ordinary, like drum machines 
and vintage style synths, vintage style synths, uh, a sequencer, right, a sampler, things that we've had for years, reverb, and then I try to mix over that a more complex layer, which is much more experimental and sometimes falls apart as well. And it all comes together on the MX-1. So that's why the MX-1 is so key. There are two other features of this um, studio that I wanted to go over very quickly. The first is the artwork. Um, I've collected a number of pieces by my favorite artist. His name is William Stidham. This is from his Sacred, Art, uh, Sacred Heart series. This is the dude. Uh, in my studio, I also have the Beatles and Lane Staley up on the wall. Moog poster. Moog poster. This is an original painting by Christian Hada. It's called The Machine. Giant poster of the Incredible Hulk 181, as well as the actual copy I have of Incredible Hulk 181 and 180, the first appearance of Wolverine. The Beatles and Lego Stranger Things. Broadcast computer, able to jam station. I have a APC-40 right there, Typhon, Novation Base Station 2, all passion of this rig. I do Ableton jams. I love jamming in Ableton. With Ableton, you can get different results than Dawless, right? And if you can still jam in Ableton. You just use Session View. It's kind of amazing, actually. It's still clip-based, and its sequence is basically the same as the Akai Force. But with Ableton, Max, as well as the huge array of VSTs out there, you could really explore a lot more things than you were able to do with the limitations of this kind of rig. So within Ableton, I'm always trying to look into the more digital realm. I have plenty of wonderful analogs. When I'm in Ableton, I want to find things using Serum or FM8, sounds that are uh, unobtainable over here. That way I can loop them, riff them, put them into here, and then they can be on the big Zen Battle Station. Finally, we have the open table. The open table has leads that go into the rig. It has MIDI, so it syncs up with the rig. On the open table, I'll be doing iPad jams, as well as configurations uh, from the big rig. I'll be taking one or two pieces, putting them on here. There's a 90 degree stand, and I'll be able to film that and do interesting, unique things using limited devices. Uh, the open table will also allow anybody who wants to come over and jam, an easy way to tech right in. When you have someone come over to jam, one of the biggest pains in the ass is setting up. So the concept behind the open table is by having a lead and MIDI on there already, um, all they need to do is plug in their, their gear and there's already power. So they can just pop right in, grab the leads, grab the MIDI and, and get going with everything else being in sync. The open table also is gonna serve as um, sort of like the experimental way station. So it, it'll allow me to, to build new things and you're gonna see it quite a bit. It is an antique coffee table uh, that was hand painted. Uh, so it's very unique. No one else is gonna have that as their background. It's not a typical oak. It's also not very clean looking, which is kind of the idea. Anyway, so this is my studio. I'm very proud of it. Uh, this is you know, where I come to relax. It's where I come to listen. Uh, it's where I come to make music. Uh, it's, this is my creative heaven right here. I've been building towards it my whole life. Uh, most of the time I perform as dank underscore live underscore AF on Twitch. Uh, I haven't because I just moved in about two months, but I'll be back on this Saturday and you can find me there every single weekend with uh, abstract AMCR doing visuals at 1130 with Dark Passage, our show together. I'm also planning on doing an Ableton Jam uh, about once a week, perhaps an iPad Jam and then releasing some kind of video off this table. It's an ambitious set, but I love what I do. I love the synth community. I love the clown army. Uh, and the Golden Shrimp Guild is also, it, I mean, that's, that's my first love. That's, that's what I come from. And anybody who does long form jams and wants to stream, please come find me. Uh, you know, we love uh, everything that Mark is doing and fully support him. And, you know, we seek to be, uh, you know, really great aligned partners in, in how we're attacking the synth space and, and pushing music and artistry, not just being gear salesmen. So anyway, thanks everyone for listening. We ramble on. And I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Hey Samuel, what's your favorite word? Motherfucker's my favorite word. Hey Samuel, turn the lights off in the music room.